Hello everyone and welcome to this online webinar for SIA Engineer. My name is Dominique Pipers and I work as a customer service engineer for SIA. The purpose of today's webinar is to discuss uh, a little bit the industrial buildings or industrial structures and SIA Engineer and what are the possibilities for it. Before we start, maybe some few words, a few words about, uh, let's say, the go-to webinar tool that we are using and also you are using it to play this webinar right now. So if you have any problems with the sound, you can use the sound check button to change the settings, to change the speakers or headphones and so on. If you have any questions during this webinar, uh, please don't hesitate to insert them in the question box. We will try to answer all the questions immediately at the end of the webinar. If due to a lot of attendees, so also a lot of questions, this is not possible, we will create a list with all the questions and send it to you afterwards by email. And the last one, of course, this webinar will be recorded, so you can review it afterwards or on our YouTube channel or on our website www.sia.net. Here you see the, the, the content of this webinar. So we will start with a short introduction, uh, mainly about who are we, what about the engineer, and what are we doing, and what are the key benefits of our software. And then about industrial structures itself, or industrial buildings itself, we will start with some easy modeling tools, uh, discuss the import possibilities, have a look on meshing and results, of course, uh, have a look at design tools, and also the export, let's say, the output document, namely the engineering report. Now first, uh, what about the Nemechek group? Uh, for some of you, Nemechek may be a new brand. So I've chosen a few, few slides on the company. Uh, Nemechek is one of the world's largest AEC software developers. So we have offices all over the world and we develop a wide range of software for architectural and engineering industry, industries actually. Just a few facts and figures. Uh, we have been in business for more than 50 years. Uh, we have 1.8 million users in 142 different countries. We have 1,700 employees worldwide. Um, like mentioned before, we have uh, locations worldwide, so over 50 locations and more than 40 countries. Next, uh, what are the softwares that Nemechek has developed or is developing? So uh, this is all what is in the Nemechek group. So you see, for instance, Alplan or Graphisoft or Solibri uh, is also part of the Nemechek group, actually. And the, of course, the software that we are going to discuss today is SIA or SIA Engineer. Here you see one of our cost, uh, customers. So we have this big manufacturing customers like, uh, for instance, or engineering uh, customers like uh, Mammut, like Arcadis, like Fluor, like uh, Siemens, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. First of all, what kind of structures are modeled and calculated by our users and our software? Now, C Engineer can be used for all types of structures. It can be used for offices and residential complexes industrial buildings, energy-related structures such as towers or masts, or infrastructures like bridges and tunnels, environmental structures like tanks and poles, or special structures like, for instance, scaffolds. In today's webinar, we are really going to focus on industrial structures and how the software can be used for those. Now, when we talk about the software, we really like to break down the benefits of CNG and what we call the four key benefits. We have a fast and efficient modeling environment, advanced analysis and multi-material design. We have automatic and coordinated documentation and the last one, in dropper ability and post-processing. And during this presentation, we're going to talk about uh, kind of all four of these uh, key benefits in the software. So for now, I'm going to switch to C-Engineer itself. Here you can see the interface of C-Engineer. This is a recent version, namely C-Engineer 16.0. We have to start with a 3D window, where you can easily visualize, rotate, or zoom on your structure. And next, on top of the screen, there's the main buttons and also some toolbars where you can find most of the functionalities of features and there is the main tree with some kind of windows explorer functionality where you can uh, find all the features and functionalities available in the software 
Finally, there is a property palette of the property window where every property of a selected entity can be shown but also can be changed in an easy way. Now, many times we talk about how to start a project in C Engineer or in any kind of software. Now, of course, in our structure menu, you can start modeling your project using 1D, 2D elements, and so on. But of course, we also have a lot of import possibilities or features here directly in C Engineer. To start with, you can use, for instance, an AutoCAD drawing using the option Import DWG or DXF file. Next, of course, we have also some import uh, functionalities or possibilities. For instance, you can use an XML file. And the next one, of course, a Revit file, a Tecla file, a file coming from Alplom, and so on. Everything can be used here to import or to start your project directly into C Engineer. The last one is the table inputs, which is some sort of Excel layout, an Excel table. So this means that you can model your structure in Excel and import this table here directly into C Engineer. Now, within C Engineer, there is a wide range of possible profile types or cross sections that you can use. Of course, the possibilities are dependent of the material that you have chosen in your project. In this particular project, there is chosen to be uh, or to use steel as well as concrete material. So this also allows you to use both uh, materials for the cross sections. As you can see, there is a really wide range and also everything is dependent on the profile library filter that you have used. Uh, as you can see, we have, for instance, American, Brazilian, British, European, Chinese, all different type of cross sections are already available here in C Engineer, but also a, right, a correct reference to the source. Now, what is really nice is instead of also the possibility, instead of using a, a library cross sections, is that you can create your own cross section using the general cross-section uh, feature. With this feature you can draw any type, any form of cross-section or you draw it yourself or you can uh, import a drawing again uh, using a DWG file for instance. Now on this particular project I've also created one general cross-section as you can see uh, consisting of let's say an RHS section and also a T section on top of it and this one has been mirrored also to the button. So you see any type of form of cross-section is possible. Also important to mention is what we see in here is that there are two different materials possible in a cross-section. So also multi-material cross-sections are possible. What is really nice, or why is this all possible, is that CI is using, of course, finite elements. So what you see here is all the properties has been calculated, taking into account, of course, the geometry uh, of the cross-section, the stiffness, the material, and so on. And because of the finite element analyzer, C engineer is, is, uh, allows you to calculate all the different possibility, uh, properties here in this window. Now, when the cross sections and the elements are established, you can actually start the modeling of your structure. Uh, you can do this, uh, like mentioned before, using, for instance, a table input, or you can use one of the best features in C Engineer, namely, uh, let's say, the fast and efficient modeling uh, atmosphere, which you can find in the structure menu. We have different type of um, 1D elements, as you can see in here, and also different type of 2D elements. So all types are available. And uh, it's clearly that, for instance, you can choose for a column that will be used for vertical elements. When you want to define a horizontal element, you can use a type beam. Or you can use a type member, and then you're completely free. I mean, then you could just have to define the start and the end point, uh, for instance, uh, for drawing some bracings, which are not vertical and not horizontal. Same for 2D elements or 2D members, you can choose plate, wall, shell, and so on. So um, let's do this. So let's start, for instance, with a column. And uh, you can just choose one of these uh, cross sections which you have defined in your structure. So let's say I want to use HEA 220. You can define the length. Uh, and I will define the members as a line in the center here. And next you can see that he will automatically use some snap points like this also in AutoCAD for instance where you can use some snapping points so I will just draw some columns here 
and as you can see I can continue on clicking just until I end, uh, I end this command and you see in the command line here what you can do so we are now in the functionality new column enter points so when you click on escape the functionality will be entered and you are no longer in that particular function the design or, or the, the drawn elements remain selected until you click again on escape once you have drawn one you can select the element again and you will see now in the property window that all the properties that are available for this kind of column which i have defined now are shown here and here you can easily for instance say no i don't want to use an ha 220 we will use another cross section for instance as you saw there were some uh, snapping points which you can use i will quickly show them uh, here is some cursor snap settings where you can choose which kind of snap points you want to use and i will also tick on an additional one or original point to be able to draw the members correctly uh, so for this next for the beam for instance i will use the option member I will define or use a different or another type of cross section, let's say an HA300. And here you will see you no longer have to define uh, the length of the, of the element because you can define by clicking the start point and end point of this member. So I will quickly draw some members. For instance, this one. Start here and end here in this second point. Here the same. And maybe I can continue by also drawing the other beams immediately. Start point each time and clicking on the end point. Again, the same. Finish this function or this feature by clicking on Escape. And as you see, the drawn elements remain selected, uh, which is now handy because I want to change one of the properties or one of. Uh, the, the uh, properties here in the property window. You see, for instance, here that the member system line is in center, and I will also zoom a bit. I want to change this now, so I will say member system line is on top, and you immediately see what this will, uh, how this will influence the calculation, of course. Again, click on escape to end this functionality. Next part, uh, maybe the last one here, which I will model, is also with the type of member, and I will draw some bracings, let's say some uh, L profiles, which I'm going to use for that. Also, some defined in the project, so I will use this one, for instance. Start this here as a start point, and here is an end, and here again the same note until note. Once you have Draw on those bracings, you can simply click on escape. And, uh, and you, as mentioned before, these elements keep selected. And of course, we have, like any other software, some nice and easy uh, modeling tools, like, for instance, uh, Move, Copy, Mirror, and so on. Once you know these buttons, they are really handy to use, or you can also find them here where you have an explanation. So if you go to modify, I will say copy now, start, or you select, for instance, the start point, I, and I can easily say this is the end point here. To model it in a very, very easy way, as you can see. Now, when you have a complex structure like this one, for instance, it's easy to organize your model uh, using activities in C Engineer. And activities work in a different kind of way. For instance, you can say, I uh, want to select some elements and only see the selected parts or the elements that I have selected, like I have done here. Or you can use layers. Uh, for instance, you can say, I want to use my activity by layers. And uh, we have already predefined some layers here in this uh, particular project. So also one layer containing the shoot. So if I want to use this layer, you now see that we only visualize the shoot, actually all the elements that are in that particular layer, which makes it really easy to visualize your structure, to do the um, modifications to your structure, afterwards also to show the results in the, as part of this particular structure. Uh, now is the case that actually you only see uh, the elements that are in that particular layer, or you can also say show the rest of the structure, like you see here in some gray lines actually. Um, still, you the gray lines are visible, but they are not selectable. So you cannot edit actually at this point everything mm -hmm. else that is not in a particular layer uh, than this certain shoot.
So now if you only have visualized the shoot, it makes it more easy to do some modifications. So let's do this. For instance, I want to drag uh, this particular plate so we have a bigger surface in this shoot, actually. Uh, easy to do is just select one of the nodes, and then we can use a selection filter to say, you see here in the property window, that all the properties of this particular node or element are shown. And I want to change the x-coordinate, not only for this node, but for every node that has the same x-coordinate as this particular node. So I can use what we call the selection filter by property, and you will see that he automatically select all the nodes with the same x coordinate which will be eight nodes in total here and we can easily change it here let's say i want to insert 30.7 as an x coordinate and you will see that the changing order modifications has been done um, next i will draw a simple plate because we already have used the 1d member modeling tool but now we're going to draw a 2d member as the type of plate where you can choose a material insert the thickness and of course you have to manually uh, draw the plate here in the correct way pay attention i'm now in the functionality of drawing a plate and here in this uh, just on top of the command line we have some options actually to draw your plate so you're not restricted to a rectangle plate you can also use let's say a circular arc or a polygon or a parabolic arc or even you can choose or select a line if you have, for instance, imported the drawing lines from an AutoCAD drawing. So we have multiple possibilities here. Let's say I just want to draw here this certain plate. And like before, end with escape. So now that this plate has been drawn, I want to do the same actually on the other side. And for that, we can use our geometric uh, manipulation tools like mirror for instance so we will mirror we have here modify mirror and now you can choose let's say the mirror plane and i will rotate a little bit so we can actually see what will happen uh, whether the plate is in the correct place no i don't want to remove the original one and now we see we have here this modification done now in the next part of course we have changed the shoot while all the other parts of the structure were invisible so now we need to check whether these uh, modifications will influence the rest of the structure so i will deselect the activity to show the complete structure again so now maybe the clearance between the shoot and the rest of the structure is no longer sufficient so we need to check whether we have to change the rest of the structure and this is just a process that we as an engineer go through all the time so maybe there has been made some changes in the architectural model or in the industrial project because for example the mechanical system need to change for any kind of reason we need to change the structure all the time so in this case we are going to move the structure a bit by selecting one particular node so maybe we can select this node and use the selection filter in the property window to select every node with the same x coordinates and then makes it, that makes it really easy to insert the higher x coordinate to move actually the structure in an easy way so let's say that we insert uh, uh, the higher x coordinate and then we will see that the structure will move actually so that we have more clearance here on this part so and actually now we've made some really easy but maybe in other software some more complex manipulations to change the overall 3d model based on the fact that we've been able to see what is really happening so now maybe we can also insert a floor plate so uh, let's say we're going to insert a steel plate actually as mentioned before uh, any type of form or any type of shape is possible by drawing plates by using one of these easy buttons here in the command line you can insert for instance immediately a rectangle or a circular arc or a real circle actually so uh, let's say we're going to draw a simple plate uh, using and then i'm going to, go to change my snap points let's start maybe from this node just until here so now we have quickly inserted some floor plate actually in the structure which will indeed have also some uh, influence on the horizontal stiffness of the structure here So now at this point, we have created the model, we have inserted some support, and now we need to start thinking how to load this model. 
So I'm going to use the activities again to turn on the shoot, which makes it easier to load actually the shoot itself. Like this. And I'm going to delete this player that I have drawn. Okay, so I've already created some load cases, so some standard load cases I must say. So in the load menu we can start inserting the real loads on the model. As you can see we have all different type of loads available like in other softwares. We have uh, point forces, we have line forces, we have surface loads, thermal loads as well as uh, displacement, point and line displacement for instance, uh, a plane generator and so on and so on. So, and one of the really most unique features of C-Engineer is the ability to use what we call free surface loads. So, free surface loads, this one actually, uh, are actually the ability to create surface loads that are completely independent of the surfaces itself. So, the load can be inserted on any surface and can then be assigned to any surface you want. So, in this case, I'm going to change my working plane to insert the free surface load on the shoot, actually. So let's say that we choose, for instance, according to Entity LCS, so I can select one of these planes of the shoot to insert the working plane on this particular location. So what I'm now going to do, actually, I want to insert, let's say, a surface load that is varying on base of depth. So instead of using a surface load on 2D member, I'm going to insert a free surface load. And here, so in this window, you can set, for instance, the direction of the load. You can insert the distribution uh, direction of the load, and you can insert some values. So I want to use my member LCS system, and I'm going to insert some negative values. Let's say minus uh, 15, just until minus four, uh, minus five, for instance. And then I can start using this intersection points of the shoot to draw actually my first uh, my surface load so I will do it for instance just through here rotate a little bit to do the same on the other direction like this and now I've inserted actually a free surface load on that particular part of the chute so now mm -hmm. doing so we have created a varying load which is varying in depth which is going to be applied at this point to every um, particular plate on that particular surface of the chute. By selecting this load again in the property window, every parameter can be changed. So actually we can change the values or more uh, advanced, we can change the selection point, meaning that we have the ability to select every element that should be loaded by that particular surface load. So you can choose actually instead of loading the complete surface, only some plates in this shoot should be loaded by this particular surface loads. So at this point actually we have created the model itself. So Fast and efficient modeling is really not only uh, creating the model itself, but also the loading that we have to apply to that to that model, of course. Let's now go ahead and talk a little bit about the analysis options in CI Engineer. CI really has a wide range of analysis capabilities. So having all these analysis capabilities integrated into one single modeling environment really makes CI Engineer efficient for your day-to-day -day work. You won't hit your head to the ceiling really quickly. So with C-Engineer, you really have a software that lets your company take on bigger uh, and maybe also more complex projects because you don't have to jump to another software all the time. Once you get out of the typical, let's say, the typical buildings or the typical uh, structures. And so we have a really extensive list of analyzer capabilities, which you can see in here. And of course, there are a couple of them which I would like to highlight because I think they're important for the industrial buildings calculations. So let's start with the first one. The first one is the nonlinear analysis. Of course, there are a few different uh, use cases actually. For instance, I have, I have some, some three out of them analysis of base frames for tension only elements, or maybe guide mass with steel ropes, or direct analysis method which can be very useful for this kind of structures that we have here today. Actually, we have integrated five different calculation methods in C-Engineer for the nonlinear analysis. I've just highlighted the three most widely known, like Timochenko, 
uh, Neutral Robson and Picard. We really have to, just to create the input data like our nonlinear combinations, of course, and choose the calculation methods uh, and, and choose some settings. And then, of course, we can start to analyze this and we can start have a look at the results. And of course, the results will, will have some redistribution of internal forces or equilibrium of the structure. And of course, the required code checks, like for instance, the Euro code or any other selected code that you've used can be now uh, used. The second one that I want to highlight is the dynamic ana analysis, and which is especially for structure like I was showing today. Because we got a lot of movement based on grains or product maybe in the shoot uh, running through. So we can do a simple natural frequency calculation, maybe a kind of resonance calculation, or we can even input some harmonic loads, like inputting a frequency and doing some damping for instance. And then, of course, we can show the results or have a look at the results like the eigenfrequencies of the structure itself or what are the mass participation factors. And we can even show the eigenmode shapes using an animation window to really understand the behavior of the structure. So we can do actually also do a full seismic dynamic ana analysis of the structure. The last analysis method that I want, or analysis uh, met, yeah, method that I want to show you, is actually the stability one. So uh, the model allows us to search for, let's say, the buckling modes that would lead to the collapse of the structure. So we really try to understand how the structure is truly gonna buckle. So what actually are we doing? We use the k factors that are running out of the steel code check. So using the stability analysis allows us to understand under what type of loads or what are the load coefficients, the critical load coefficients, is the shape going to buckle. And then utilize that buckle shape as a true buckled shape uh, and a true relationship of our K factors and the steel code check, of course. So in that case, we can better understand how it's going to buckle, so how your structure is going to buckle, instead of using, let's say, yeah, a over conservative assumption, or we can actually understand how the structure is going to fail under certain loading conditions. So let's now talk, let's now talk a little bit more about the analyzers itself. So I'm going to switch back to C-Engineer, and I've already let's say the same model uh, here open in CR engineer in which I have already produced the results and again, again I'm going to go ahead and switch to the layer activity to show the shoot only so like this so okay here I already have generated the mesh so I'm going to enable the mesh so you can see what this mesh looks like here and there are some refinements so here now you can clearly see the mesh. You see this yellow surfaces. This means that there is an, an refinements, uh, refinement made on this particular plate uh, to have a denser mesh there than the rest of the structure actually. So that one I will disable. So I can change the view parameters I must say in the structure and then draw, let's say, refinements no longer. I can also show it like this. So meshing in C-Engineer is automatic. So the user sets up a global mesh size and then utilizes refinements like those you just saw, which were uh, shown in yellow. In C-Engineer, you have the possibility to use or nodal refinements or edge refinements, or like in this case, surface refinements to change the mesh size actually in that particular part of the structure. So I can have a different mesh size on every single plate if I want to. Or I, I can let the engineers just say I want a global mesh on everything and let the engineer generate that mesh automatically. Now, the mesh is generated automatically or either when uh, we run the calculation or when we run the mesh ahead of the calculation to review it and make sure that it's okay. Like uh, for instance here now, you can vi visualize now the mesh and you can see whether it's okay, yes or not. Another possibility is to use the automatic re mesh refinements, which is implemented in C-Engineer. And this refinement is using actually real loading conditions on the structure. 
let's now talk about some results now there are different type of results that may be used for you so i'm going to turn everything back on and maybe get rid of uh, the view of the mesh so i'm going to disable let's say the mesh itself and then here in this main tree window actually you can go to the results menu we have several types of results that you can ask for in the CI engineer. Uh, we have displacements of nodes, uh, deformed structure, we even have 3D displacement and 3D stresses. We definitely don't have the time to discuss them all today, but I'm just going to show some of them. We have support reactions like uh, reaction uh, forces or resultant of reactions. Uh, 1D results is in the menu for beams, 2D results in the memory, 2D members of course. So let's start with 2D results, uh, member contact stresses. So I will disable the rendering actually and ask for the contact stresses which are in the direction Z in this case. Uh, here you see now in the graphical window some color view actually uh, which will show you the contact stresses. The values itself are shown here in this palette on the right side of the screen. So this is a way how you can visualize, let's say, support reactions in a sigma z value here in the context stress because we have inserted some soil support actually on this particular part of the structure. In C engineer, it's possible to insert some soil support or soil springs which have a constant stiffness, uh, or you can also insert, for example, some boreholes and let C engineer calculate the wheel stiffness of the soil actually. And the results for that can be asked here, like you see them in contact stresses to the member uh, results menu. So this is what you can do for 2D results. You also have displacements of nodes, internal forces, and so on, and so on. So let's now maybe talk a little bit about 1D results, uh, for instance, internal forces on a beam. And I've already created a selection. So it is possible as the engineer to select the elements and save that selection. So uh, I'm going to load that particular selection which contains of let's say some columns two or three columns actually and i'm only going to use my activity by selection to show only that particular column if we now ask for the results uh, and i will generate it uh, let's say the actual loading then you can see here that these are the values for the actual loading in this particular column or these particular two columns here this is graphical view uh, so we also always have the possibility to ask for the results let's say the table output in some sort of preview window so i will quickly open this window and then you will see here now for this particular columns that are you see here b25 and b1643 that are in that name selection uh, here you see the results for that particular load combination so you always have the possibility graphical uh, representation or table representation let's say in table uh, preview output so this is for example uh, an example of internal forces in 1d element let's say um, the other ones like mentioned before we have a lot of uh, results uh, possibilities actually uh, but we definitely don't have the time to discuss them all today so I'm going to close the window uh, for the preview actually and maybe we can now go to the steel menu uh, in this main tree to discuss something or to show something about the steel core check here and also for the steel core check i have created let's say a safe selection so what i will do i will first uh, disable the activity and load that selection for which i named steel core check actually which consists of two let's say two elements in the structure which you will see here in the mid section so i will also use my activity by selection to only show these two particular elements so here you see actually what is possible on the steel menu uh, you can ask for a steel code check or uh, a SLS check actually according to the selected code of course in this particular project I've used the euro code so my ULS check will be according to the euro code all other different type of codes are also available in the software so I will ask for the steel code check now um, for a particular combination actually and here you see now this is a result for that two elements uh, in a graphical way so again also possible to ask for the preview same as in the results menu and then you will see that it is a stability check this will give me a check of 0 0.66 so this is the, let's say the brief output um, more interesting of course when you really uh, need to check what is uh, 
the reason of this particular value in the circle check you can use the detailed output level where you can see a really detailed output of, of the check actually so all information is there there's always uh, a reference to the used codes and also to let's say the used article in that particular code so here we start for the euro code partial safety factors uh, first the section classification of course has been done the internal forces are named here and then we're going to do according to what internal forces are in that particular beam or column or one of the elements we are going to do the steel code check compression check bending check and also of course some stability check whether it's in compression of course we have our flexural buckling check uh, which has need to be performed torsional buckling check uh, bending and extra compression and so on and so on so everything is printed out here in detail you as a user can always check what is the engineer doing in the background to uh, do the calculation of that particular unity check that he has printed here now for instance for the buckling and for that maybe i will again uh, load my um, other safe selection actually uh, so this one because we have different mm, ways to insert or to evaluate a buckling system actually in CIGD so let's say I will select only this particular element now we can now in our uh, buckling relative length system actually in the property palette we can define some elements or buckling systems or we also the nicest one is actually the graphical input of system length if I use or open that window, you will definitely directly see, okay, what is actually the buckling system of that particular element here. Um, and you also see the rest of the structure in some sort of grayed out. Um, so you can evaluate the automatic generated buckling system by C-Engineer uh, immediately here in this graphical window. C-Engineer also does doing the linear calculation, automatic calculation of the buckling ratios actually. So that is also automatically done in the background during the linear calculation. Now, we discussed so far actually the results in, in, in let's say, steel columns and steel elements. So it's also possible in C-Engineer to design, of course, the concrete walls, concrete plates, concrete beams, uh, and so on. And, of course, the concrete design is also possible. Now, for that, I want to show a, a short video, actually, uh, where a concrete wall will be, uh, uh, the reinforcement will be designed in that concrete wall. So, first of all, it's possible to... Um, ask for the required reinforcement so and then you can choose which type of value you want to show so we have a positive and negative phase of the z direction and of course we have one and two as a direction by default this is x and y direction of that particular local axis system of that wall and then actually you can uh, in this palette you show that this is uh, the required reinforcement area actually that you need uh, in this particular wall so you can also this in, in both directions and in both phases, like mentioned before, positive and negative phase, and in the one and two direction. Next, you have the possibility to insert user reinforcement, of course, um, using actually theoretical user reinforcement or actually real practical uh, reinforcement. So, and actually this can be shown here, um, using or enabling actually the... Um, visibility of that practical reinforcement that has been inserted so here everything can be changed and you can choose another material you can set up how many bars do you want with which uh, which concrete cover so everything is again an open uh, not at all a black box is really open and you can insert every parameter of the practical reinforcement yourself and practical reinforcement can be done by reinforcement 2d so uh, this is actually how you can model or how you can design, let's say, the reinforcement in a 2D element in CNG. And it's not only for walls, it's actually for all type of 2D concrete elements in our software. Now, in the last phase, actually, uh, the calculation is done, the design is done, actually, you're finished with your project. Then, of course, you want to create some sort of document, uh, some output and input document, where you can uh, put all information together to send it to the customer or to send it to uh, how you prefer. And that is done in, in uh, let's say, uh, the engineering report, it is named. So, actually, in this particular project, I've already created uh, an engineering report. I will quickly open it. And here you can insert all the information that is there in, in, in C-Engineer. So, uh, as you can see, there is a standalone uh, application which has a dynamic um, connection with C-Engineer itself so if I go back to C-Engineer and maybe I will visualize the structure back in 3D actually 
you have multiple uh, possibilities here. So when you click right, actually, you can say that you want to send a screenshot into the engineering report or maybe a live picture into the engineering report, like being a dynamic picture, of course. Uh, you can send table with results to the engineering report and so on and so on and so on. So actually every input, but also the output, the results, the, the uh, graphically, but also in the preview window can be sent to this engineering report. And here you see, I will have opened the engineering report actually, I have entered it here, let's say a 3D um, view of our structure of our model, which we have discussed today. Um, for the rest, actually, uh, you can insert page break, uh, table of contents, uh, you can create chapters, you can create, for instance, a chapter with input where you have a list of all your cross sections that you have used in your particular project. And it's also the possibility to change the layout. For instance, you see here some data is printed out in this cross section table. If you are not interested at all in the fabrication, then you can edit this table and delete it out of it, of course. So everything is editable here in this engineering report window. We have table with materials, subsoils, and so on and so on. Next in the results menu, we have our context stresses, for instance, and here you see some static picture that I have sent it to the engineering report, uh, which will keep or remain the same actually like it is now, because it is a snapshot of that particular result then, and see, it's not a live picture. You can ask for internal forces, actually, uh, you can ask for 3D displacement, everything is really possible to insert here in this engineering report. Um, now, also one thing maybe to mention is that, for instance, for this particular 3D uh, uh, view of the structure, I ticked on this export to PDF as 3D. Oh functionality or feature because of course once you have created your engineering report you want to be able to send it to your customer or to send it to third parties um, in some sort of form and the most used or the most handy way of course is a PDF form so we have the possibility if I use this button actually to or directly send it to the printer or there are some export possibilities you see here PDF, RTF, HTML and so on. Now most use of course is PDF, you can choose uh, let's say what is the resolution, what is about rendering of pictures and so on. So let's say I will quickly export it to, uh, I don't know, export 3D, save and yes I want to override it. And then you will open it in, of course, some default standard, let's say, uh, PDF creator or, or, or Adobe Reader software. And yes, I want to trust this document. So now I have a nice, maybe zoom a little bit out, a document created in CI Engineer, exported to PDF format, actually. And in this PDF format, because I had inserted this one as a 3D image, now you also have the possibilities to zoom, rotate, pan, no matter what, actually, of that 3D window here, in, in, in of that 3D view in the PDF uh, form itself. And this can be is really useful, uh, this PDF form, to send by email to your customer, uh, no matter what. Once you have created, actually, your... Um, let's say your layout and the content of your engineering report you don't want to do it for each project again of course so uh, we have the possibility you only do it once and then you can save that particular report with the viewpoints with the rendering settings with all the tables options that are in there with the tables itself every parameter that is in there can be saved in some sort of user template and then the user template can be used in any other project so once you have created your User template actually is really fast and really easy to use or to generate, let's say, an engineering report or an output document in all the other projects. Actually, you just need to save it as a template and then it will be here under the user template tab actually, and you can reuse it. So now we actually have really briefly talked about, uh, let's say, industrial buildings, uh, CAD modeling tools. Uh, showing some results, creating some engineering reports, and so on. So, uh, I will switch back to my PowerPoint. So now, what about interoperability in C Engineer? Uh, so, really short slides, actually. Uh, we have a lot of export possibilities in C Engineer itself, but we also have, of course, a direct link with uh, Tecra structure or with Revit structure, um, or we also have a direct link with um, 
let's say, steel detailing software SDS uh, in an IFC kind of way that you can send data directly to that software. So everything that it can be exported to IFC, uh, also a possibility, can also be inserted, of course, in every CAD software or modeling software or uh, analyzer software that has the possibility to import IFC uh, format directly into the software. Maybe about this interoperability, uh, there is an upcoming webinar about BIM, about the Revit link and so on. We will uh, mention it also later on in the end of this webinar. Maybe uh, before we end, um, because mostly okay, we have a software that can do a lot. As you can see, we have really a wide range of possible uh, analyzers capabilities. Every type of analyzer is possible. You can model almost everything. But uh, a question that we really a lot of uh, times get is okay, but what are your users really doing? So actually, every two years, we have some sort of CI user contest where our CI and Alplan users can um, show them um, nice, really present, really nice projects that they have been uh, designing, modeling, and calculating actually in C Engineer or in Alplan software. So let's have a look at some of this, uh, some of these examples. So for instance, here we have uh, Eurocilo. Um, it is in Ghent, in Belgium, actually. Uh, so you see that also this kind of uh, structures is possible to calculate in C Engineer. I will not discuss it in detail. I will just quickly show some of them. Or here is steel structure actually uh, in Poland, uh, which has been created. And maybe the last one also, the, for instance, the study of lifting equipment for heavy loads. So because we can model shells uh, of every kind of material, uh, we can also do this kind of, of, of detailing calculation actually in NCA Engineer. Okay, so this is the end of this webinar. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank you all for your attention, actually. And if you have any questions, uh, please answer them in the, chat book, in the chat box. We will try to answer them all uh, immediately now. But depending on the amount of attendees and depending on the amount of questions, it is possible that we don't have the time to answer them all. But then we will uh, report them in some sort of list and answer them afterwards by email. Maybe also to mention, we have some upcoming webinars. Uh, first of all, what is new uh, in New Concrete in C Engineer 16? A really interesting webinar about new features that we have developed for New Concrete in C Engineer 16. Then, like mentioned before, actually, um, we have a webinar coming up from the Revit link in C Engineer and also everything about BIM using our software. For other questions, I mean, if you have any questions, you can always contact your local sales representative uh, or you can email sales at sia.net or you can also send your user questions to our support department to support at sia.net. So again, thank you for your attention.